Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're here today to talk about the Imaginate Pulse platform and our new release for fall 2018. My name is Matt Mason with Imaginit, and with me I have Tim Strandberg uh, from our consulting group. And we're going to talk today about a few different topics. Uh, since Pulse is still a new product, we're going to review what is the Pulse product, uh, why did we build it, what can it do, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the fall release and some of the new things that are available uh, in this fall release and talk about how we continue the conversation. And in the middle, uh, Tim is going to uh, give a demonstration of some different uh, system integration kind of workflows that you can do with Pulse. So Pulse is all about system integration, but I wanted to first offer a little bit of uh, background. Uh, I've been with the company for about 25 years, if you count mergers and acquisitions and all those things. And I think Tim is uh, is right up there, uh, you know, about in the same uh, same ballpark as me. And we've done a ton of integration projects over that time. Uh, we've tied various different systems together. These are just a few of the ones that uh, jumped out as I was making the uh, uh, presentation. And a lot of these tended to be really custom-oriented jobs. They were made for one specific customer. They got the job done, but when we were looking at them, they really, because they were built for one customer and built on a sort of minimalist budget uh, kind of timeline, you know, their ability to be reused was limited. Uh, there was minimal investment in um, flexibility and polish. Um, we looked at these various issues as we started to do more integration with cloud solutions, uh, and they were harder to, to integrate uh, on-premise to cloud and back. And really, they were just kind of challenging to, uh, to really get the most out of. And we had a new project coming up where we were, we were going to do a vault to fusion lifecycle integration, and we figured there must be a better way. And how do we build a platform that can make these system integration projects more reusable both for current customers as well as future customers, and not just for Vault and Fusion Lifecycle, but for any system integration work that we do. So the Imaginate Pulse product is built around the idea that we're going to have a centralized platform that can help us connect any two or any three systems together. Um, you know, and the way that we'll do that is by having connectors that directly integrate to the different systems uh, on both sides and then have a cloud-based platform in the middle that does the, the transferring of data back and forth and the actual workflows. And our idea is that we want to target that for any given integration where we've already uh, done a project before and we've already integrated, you know, this system to that system, that 85% of what we've done is reusable between two customers and the other 15% of the work is mostly kind of lightweight consulting and understanding how your workflows work and, you know, what's different about your business and the way that you want things to work. So in the case of our Vault to Fusion Lifecycle example, we have an on-premise Vault connector uh, that works with Autodesk Vault. We have a cloud-based uh, Fusion Lifecycle connector that works with Fusion Lifecycle, and we have Pulse to tie the two things together. So when we talk about doing a solution with Pulse, it's really a three-step process. It really breaks down to these three steps that are relatively straightforward. We just ask you to define or work with you to define what are the workflows? What integrations need to happen? How would you describe them? So we might say we need to send the vault file to Fusion Lifecycle and make it an item. We need to send item data back and update the data in vault. Um, that might need to be triggered by engineering lifecycle changes. Um, we might need to, uh, uh, you know, to update the fusion lifecycle uh, working items later as things change in vault. So workflows, 
And then what are the triggers? When do these things happen uh, within the integration? And each different connector that we have has different ways of kicking off the integration. Um, in the vault side of things, our vault connector lets you set up lifecycle triggers on files or items or that kind of thing to say this when this transition happens from uh, work in progress to for review or from for review to released, that's when we want this workflow to happen uh, on the Fusion lifecycle side. And then correspondingly on the Fusion lifecycle side, you have engineering change order, um, you know, maps and that kind of thing where you can say, at this point, this is the point where we want to send information back uh, to Vault, as an example. And then finally, step three, the actual workflow details, where we take something like send the Vault file to Fusion Lifecycle item, and we break it down a little further into, uh, into different steps, and we provide an easy scripting kind of interface where you can define things like how do we map the different fields together, um, you know, when the names don't match, you know, title going into part number, or, you know, vault ID going into master ID or materials where the name matches. So really easy to see, really easy to maintain uh, for, you know, someone who uh, is involved in maintaining the system later. It keeps it everything nice and separate and organized and up to date. So I'm going to turn it over to Tim to give us a demonstration of what this looks like working on it live. Thank you, Matt. Get my screen shared here. Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Tim Strandberg. I'm a senior solutions consultant with Imaginate's uh, product lifecycle management and data management group. As Matt says, um, been around seemingly forever so may have crossed paths with some of you before. Uh, <clears throat> today we're really going to um, we're going to take a journey. We're going to start with the uh, our scenario is we have engineering files in Vault that our engineers have have designed. Here we have an example of a simple toggle clamp uh, for our data set today. We want to. Uh, move those files or upload those files to Fusion Lifecycle because we're going to control their, their ultimate release cycle from Fusion Lifecycle. Additionally, our accounting folks also want a copy of that Fusion Lifecycle item over on the, the ERP side. So you'll notice here we, we have a uh, clamp assembly. It's got 10 simple parts in it. They're all currently uh, work in progress. I'm going to change the state. Remember Matt talked about um, reacting to uh, events within Vault, and we can, uh, you know, a file state change is one of those events that we can react to. So I simply change that uh, work in progress file state to for review and in the background, there we see it pop up. Um, our reactor um, catches that event. I might uh, take just a moment here and, and kind of further explain just in broad strokes uh, what Matt was talking about. He showed the graphic where we have connectors on each side and uh, pulse up in the cloud in the middle. One of the, that first connector piece is there's a vault uh, add-in or plug-in that gets installed on each user's machine. That's what allows us to, to interact with Vault, um, catch those events just like we're seeing here. There's also a server component which runs as a service on your Vault server and that helps, uh, helps us change things like file state, manage revisions, anytime that uh, we need to finally come back and update uh, files or items in Vault. Now this process, while it seems like it's taking a little bit of time here, is actually going out and collecting all of the, the items that were related to that assembly. It also, um, it also gathers up all of the viewables. If I were to hop over here, 
just a second and hit a refresh. There we can see that, <clears throat> that the vault uh, connector has communicated with Fusion Lifecycle and it's telling, uh, or excuse me, with uh, Pulse. And so now Pulse is processing that, that request of sending that vault file to Fusion Lifecycle. We'll hit a refresh here. Again, remember that, you know, we're pushing, effectively, we're pushing 33 files um, upstream into another system. And finally, it's complete. So if we take a look at Fusion Lifecycle now, and go to our items and bombs workspace. We can see here are all of our parts. Here's that top level assembly. Notice that we bring over things such as part number, stock number, description. Those match one for one with our part number, stock number, description, and so forth. So we've defined the mapping. Matt showed that little snippet of of uh, scripting code there where we map one system to another, we mapped those user-defined properties to come over here to, um, to Fusion Lifecycle. Also along that process, it built the bill of materials. So here are all of the components of that top level assembly. We can see here that it also brought the viewable attachments. So we've We've configured the Vault client add-in to include the DWFX for both of the assembly itself, the drawing, and finally create a PDF um, of that as well. So our process here is we need to, remember I said we were going to control our, our release workflow here in the Fusion Lifecycle side. So in order to do that, we need to create a change order to release those items. So we'll just simply call this one web demo. Reason for our change is going to be initial release. For those of you who have not uh, seen or been around Fusion Lifecycle very much, um, it's important to understand that it is highly configurable as well, can be tailored to, to meet your company uh, requirements exactly. Uh, we'll just let the effectivity go. It can become active as soon as we release it. Here we can see that our effectivity is going to be on release. It's going to move it to Rev A, I'll also now add all of the prospective children, all of the members of that assembly. We'll release them all at one time. And quickly set their life cycle to match. We save those changes. And now we can see that all of those components are going to go to um, uh, release A. So we look at our approval workflow. And here, um, as I mentioned, this can be configured to be anything or everything that you want it to be. This happens to be just a standard out of the box uh, workflow for change orders uh, that come straight out of the box from, from Autodesk. Um, we're going to, since we chose the routing of a, a quick, simple release, uh, we only have the option uh, to take this faster track. Had we chosen some other routing, you know, we could have gone through a, a full uh, change control board review process. 
But since it's just the initial release, we know that it's safe, all of our parts are good. So one transition and send another transition to approve it for final. And so now from, a, from an engineering perspective, these parts have been approved. If we were to go to take a peek over here at Pulse, refresh our view, we can see that, again, we have another sequence in here. And so it's a Fusion ECO release process to vault files. So we told, take a quick peek here at the log, um, we told this to, uh, for our request, told it to set all of those files to a release. Here you can see it, it found, um, you know, retrieved all the affected items, found 11 items in our ECO. Here's all of the, you know, I'm going to set them all to, to Rev A. And if we were to go back over here to Vault and refresh, we can see, lo and behold, these are all now released in a release state, and they are all set to Rev A. But that's not the end of the story. Um, we really have we really have the kind of the back section here. So imagine, if you will, you know, it was all engineering uh, staff that released those parts into the system, said, yes, it's okay to go ahead and manufacture those. And now it's kind of the ERP's team to say, okay, they're, they're approved, they're released, time to push them over into the ERP system. Well, if we were to take a look at our affected items and any one of these items in particular will do, We can see here on the item details tab that we have a NetSuite item type. NetSuite is our ERP of choice today. And NetSuite has several different item types. Um, it has, you know, serialized items and inventory items and non-inventory items and assembly items. We, of course, NetSuite doesn't know what type of, of item we're going to send it, so we have to tell it here within these details. Just for the sake of expediency for this demo, I've written a quick little script to update those items based on some internal criteria. Rather than going through each one of them one by one by one. So here we can see all of the component parts within there were set to inventory item and the top level assembly itself is set to an assembly bill of materials item. So now if we go back to our approval workflow and execute the transition, push to ERP, we will advance it to that next state I might mention that part of the, the lightweight consulting and, and uh, configuration that Matt mentioned in some of his opening slides, part of it is the scripting that we do in Pulse. Part of it um, is scripting that, that happens behind these transitions. So behind each and every one of these transitions, we can have and often do have some sort of instructions or or processes that execute behind the scenes that the, the user never sees, but is important to the overall uh, process. So behind this transition is when we made the call out to Pulse to go ahead and release those items. Behind this transition is again our call to Pulse. If we go over here and refresh, we can see that it is processing or in the current state of processing uh, to send those ECO items or change order items over to NetSuite. So again, that happens, you know, kind of behind the scenes. And still processing. 
seems like this can often be the, the slowest point in the loop. Uh, NetSuite is not the speediest um, car on the track sometimes. It takes, you know, we're trying to ingest a lot of information. Imagine we've got mappings from Vault to Fusion Lifecycle. We've also got mappings from Fusion Lifecycle to NetSuite. So we carry forward a lot of those same properties. And finally, it's complete there. So if we go over it here and take a peek at NetSuite and do a quick search here. There we can see all of our items. If I would take a peek at the clamp assembly, We can see things, uh, you know, such as that item number that came across, our description came across, um, our unit of measure, our department, you know, various other uh, components in there. If I would look here on the manufacturing tab, we can see here are all of our components that make up that part. If I would open this guy, we can see that, you know, again, here are all of our properties that came across, our description, our vendor um, came across from Vault through Fusion Lifecycle and now to, um, and now to NetSuite, if I would look on the custom tab, we see we even have a, a Fusion Lifecycle item link. So if I click there, lo and behold, it navigates um, back to my part in Fusion Lifecycle. Likewise, we have a reciprocal link that will let the Fusion Lifecycle user quickly navigate over to the NetSuite side. So that was a uh, customer request here a while back, so we thought we'd include that in the demo. Um, what else? Oh, we see that we've got um, a vendor that came across from uh, came across from Fusion Lifecycle originating in Vault. Let's see if that vendor is in the system. And I see a bunch of inventory items referencing that, but no actual vendor. Double check and make sure. Nope, those are all inventory items. So let's go ahead and create a new vendor. And we know that the name is Strandco. I know that's not very original, but set our subsidiary. Let's go ahead and fill out our address. Oops, got to get it in the right line. And when we save the record here, NetSuite saves that uh, vendor record very similar to the way that Fusion Lifecycle saves its records. So it tells us that that vendor was uh, successfully saved. 
if we were to go back over here to uh, Pulse and refresh this screen again, we'll see, lo and behold, NetSuite is pushing that vendor back to a Fusion Lifecycle supplier. So very similar to the way that we respond to uh, file state changes in Vault, very similar to the way that we react through scripting in Fusion Lifecycle to trigger events going upstream to NetSuite, we responded to that NetSuite call to create, to actually save that vendor record, Let's see if he's complete, and he is, um, to push things back to Fusion Lifecycle. So if we go over here and take a peek to our suppliers, and there's our new supplier. Again, all of, with all of our mapped properties, pulls the um, a new supplier number, sets the type, pulls in the phone number, the contact, address, any other applicable properties that we might have mapped. So really demonstrating that it's it's a bi-directional or multi-directional path that we can uh, configure. It's not just from Vault to Fusion Lifecycle to NetSuite, it could be Vault directly to NetSuite. It could be, you know, any combination that you can think of, uh, I think we can accommodate. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Matt, make him the presenter, and we can finish the show. All right, thanks, Tim. Uh, can you see my um, PowerPoint again? Yes. Great. So yeah, just uh, to you know, sort of wrap this up. Um, what else can we do? So we've shown you a, an example of um, of something with Vault and Fusion Lifecycle and uh, and NetSuite on the ERP side, but like we said, we really built Pulse to be usable for all sorts of things. And so, what else have we done with it? Well, um, a couple of additional connectors that we've built already are for things like. Autodesk BIM 360 operations or ops, um, and connecting that to a concierge system called um, called Building Link, and tying those two systems together uh, is a uh, project that we've done, and and two connectors that we have uh, pre-built and available. So you can see that we have today uh, the Imaginative Pulse platform, which Tim showed uh, some requests going back and forth across, and we have these pre-built connectors for these four different systems, Vault, Fusion Lifecycle, Building 360 Ops, and Building Link. And then we also have other connectors um, that, um, you know, that in the case of, say, NetSuite, we have a connector there that's not quite uh, ready for, to be a commercial off-the-shelf um, connector, but I think it will graduate to that uh, point soon, uh, but we can also do custom connectors if uh, if there's something you know that you don't see here that you're interested in us connecting to, we just have to build that uh, that custom connector, and we can hook other things up to it. So, Pulse is really good for we feel uh, two different scenarios. One is when you have an on-premise kind of system like Vault uh, going to integrate with a cloud-based system uh, back and forth. Um, so that's a, you know, a trickier kind of situation, and we think that's a, a good fit for Pulse. Also, if you're doing cloud to cloud, like the um, NetSuite running in the cloud to Fusion Lifecycle in the cloud is also a, a good uh, a good fit, um, you know, and, and there's no reason why you can't do an on-premise to an on-premise system. It just, you know, seems seems odd that you would, uh, you know, um, that you would, you know, go through the cloud uh, if two systems are sitting right next to each other. But you could, you know, but, uh, but these are the areas that we think we particularly stand out. So what's new in Pulse this fall? There's really a few different things. Um, we have new and updated connectors. Uh, for Vault uh, products, uh, particularly supporting Vault 2019. Uh, we've added more capabilities to those connectors, including how drawings get updated, uh, or whether you work from drawings or work from uh, parts and assemblies uh, within the uh, Vault environment. 
we have more uh, role definition within the Pulse uh, portal, uh, whether you're a company admin or a script editor or a basic user, uh, controlling who's allowed to see what and who's allowed to change what. And because Pulse is generally running in the background, once you set it up, it just runs and it should just be an engine that uh, keeps things in synchronization. Uh, but uh, we know that people like to have an understanding that things are, are working and you know, nothing's going wrong. So we did add some email alerts and digest emails so that you can see a summary of what kind of information is moving across uh, any particular time or any particular day. So um, I think the most important thing to say is that the projects that we're doing with Pulse today, they are still custom system integration projects. Um, you know, so I, I don't want to set the expectation that this is something that, you know, you can just buy and drop into place. There's, there's still always going to be, you know, discussions and work involved in uh, setting up those integrations and figuring out the right way of doing things. But we feel like by making more of a custom system integration project, be off the shelf, we are making that project more predictable and more cost effective and less risky than if we were to start with a blank sheet of paper. So if you'd like to talk more about uh, Pulse and the system integration that you might be interested in doing, uh, please reach out to your local Imaginate account representative. We've got 40 offices across North America and start the conversation with us.